What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. On Wednesday, I talked about some of my favorite running backs to take in drafts this season. And today, we're doing the exact opposite. We'll be going over some running backs that I think people will regret drafting this season. But you know what? These are just my opinions. And sometimes, you guys have takes that change my mind. So if you disagree with anything I say today, let me know. Tell me why you think I'm wrong in the comment section. And if you think I missed a player, so you think there's someone else that people will also regret drafting, then let me know. I'll be doing some videos in the future based on your guys' takes, so get them out there and upvote the ones that you agree with. But with that, let's start things off today as usual with the stat of the day. Yesterday's stat was in 2020, which running back led the league in first downs with 98? The answer was, of course, the King Derrick Henry. I'm recording this before Friday, so I do not know exactly who won the stat of the day, but I will post the names when we do get the winner, so you can see that on the screen. Today's stat, among wide receivers with at least 120 targets last season, who led the league in yards per target. All right, so let's go over some running backs that I think you'll regret drafting. And I wanted to try and pick someone early. I know it's gonna cause a bunch of controversy picking something early, but I wanted to try and pick a first round running back and then kind of just go through the draft from there. So among first round running backs, the one that I think people are most likely to regret drafting is Saquon Barkley. Um, he is 24th uh, in terms of my model's running back safety grade. So he's the 24th safest running back, meaning he's not very safe. Uh, and so the fact that it comes off the board third overall, you know, that opens up a lot of paths to disappoint. If Saquon Barkley was going in the fourth round, I'd say that he is one of the safest running backs you can draft because who cares, right? Like who cares if he didn't start the season? He, you could say that Saquon Barkley misses the first half of the year. And if you're getting him in the fourth round, you probably don't care because when he comes back, he's awesome. But at third overall, it takes away that possibility because now you're very upset, right? Like if he misses half the season, you're very upset. And I don't want to think, I don't want to make people think like, oh, he's definitely missing half the season. That of course is not what I'm saying. But uh, it, it doesn't look like he's going to be 100%. We can't possibly know for sure right now. I mean, I'm recording this on June 10th, but indications right now seem to be that like it's a slow recovery and that makes sense it was a very major knee injury that he recovered from i mean for them to throw him out there for 100 percent snaps in week one might not be smart so could he start the season a little bit slow getting more like 50 percent of the snaps maybe and when you think about taking him third overall you're just missing out on Derrick Henry, who just ran for over 2,000 yards, 17 touchdowns. Alvin Kamara, you know, the player that Fantasy Points calculated as being the single most valuable player in all of Fantasy last season in terms of how many wins above replacement he provided to your team. Well, he has reception totals also of 81, 81, 81, 83 in his four-year career. And while he doesn't have Drew Brees, he's still got uh, like quarterbacks that he, he could still produce well with. If Winston's the quarterback, we're not thinking Alvin Kamara is all of a sudden running back too. He's still going to be a stud. You had Jonathan Taylor, you know, running back who just gained uh, just under 1,500 scrimmage yards and 12 touchdowns as a 21-year-old being a part-time player for part of the season. And you're taking him ahead of the elite wide receivers, you know, ahead of Adams, if Rodgers plays, Tyreek Hill, Hopkins, Diggs, Ridley. Now, you might not love all of these players, right? But taking the chance on Barkley at three is saying that you think he's better than all of those guys. And I just don't agree. You know, if he were 100% healthy and I could trust the Giants coaching staff, then maybe. But again, he suffered a very significant leg injury last season, and that's not something that just requires rest, right? Like there's a lot he's going to need to do to fully recover from this and to be back to what he was before. And all indications are he's not there yet. He's going to be a risk to start the season. You know, this wasn't a sprained MCL. We had just wait a month or two and you're good to go. He suffered damage to the meniscus and the MCL while also tearing his ACL. It's a huge injury. No guarantee he'll be 100% before halfway through the season. And it's not like I think he'll be bad when he's healthy, but I can't justify that risk in the first round. You can have almost anyone you want in, across the entire NFL. It's probably going to go McCaffrey, then Dalvin Cook. So if you're sitting there at three or later, you can have practically any player that you want 
why take any chances? You know, you're telling me you don't want Derrick Henry, Kamara, Jonathan Taylor, Zeke, Akers, Adams, Hill, Hopkins, Diggs, Metcalf. I mean, like there's there's so many awesome players. Why take a chance on a risky player early? And if you're like, well, Nick, I, I mean, I didn't know that he was this risky. Have no fear. Our rankings have risk ratings on every single player. So you can see not only where they're ranked and where they're projected, but how risky they are and that can help you make the best possible decision. So if you want to check that out, of course, on our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. But I just think it's noteworthy that when you're scrolling through those risk ratings, everyone early is like, you know, the safest, the third safest, the sixth safest, seventh, eighth, thirteenth. It's like everyone's green except for Barkley sitting there at 24. And I think that should kind of stand out to us. Another running back that I think you might regret drafting is Josh Jacobs. Now, Jacobs will be entering his third season in the NFL at age 23, and he's gained almost exactly 1,300 yards in each of his first two seasons, scoring 19 touchdowns along the way. So that's, you know, that's pretty good production. Thing is, his production always feels disappointing. You know, he never just goes off in the receiving game. The touchdowns are always kind of bunched together. And he has upside on the ground, but not nearly as much as some other running backs, you know, and he's finished 14th and 13th in fantasy points per game, but his production has just been underwhelming. I mean, look at last season's example. Like he was a running back 13 in points per game, like I said, but 53% of his production came in four out of 13 weeks. So he was effectively a running back one for four weeks, but a high end four for the other nine. That's not great. And if we look forward to this season, those numbers have to go down, and they'll go down in the worst possible way, the receptions. We've talked for two years about how good Jacobs could be if they just gave him work in the receiving game. And no matter how much they talked about doing that, featuring him in that area, they just never did. I mean, he has two career games with more than three receptions and one career game over 38 receiving yards. And now they add Kenyon Drake in free agency and talk about how much they like him in the receiving game. Like, it just doesn't bode well for Jacobs receiving floor or ceiling. I mean, he's going to see fewer carries, fewer touchdown opportunities, fewer receptions, fewer targets, and that's going to hurt a lot. And for the crowd that says, well, it's reflected in his ADP, I'll ask you this. You take him in the fourth round, right, where he's going, he's running back 21. Would you be satisfied if he ends up 21st in points per game as a running back one for one week and a running back four or five in pretty much every other week. If you're fine with that, then draft him. But he's a player that might produce to that level of ADP when you look back at points per game. But it's going to be from like one, maybe two spiked weeks. And basically every other week is going to be well below that and just not worthwhile production. You don't take a running back in the fourth round that pretty much needs his backup to get injured to be worth that spot. That's just not a smart thing to do, especially when there are so many elite wide receivers still available. You're taking Jacobs in the fourth round over these elite wide receivers. I don't know what you're doing, so you're probably going to be disappointed at that one. Next up, we've got uh, a running back that's definitely going to surprise a lot of people. That's Damian Harris. Uh, not only because, you know... Patriots fan, you guys know, not typically one to say, I hate this player when I'm rooting for them every week, but also because I see so much hype around the industry surrounding Damian Harris, and I just don't see it. I mean, projection-wise, he's like, okay, but he's also one of the riskier running backs in my model. I think he's like 66 or something crazy. He's really, really risky. And where's the upside to make up for that? Because I'm totally fine assuming risk later in the draft if the upside makes up for it. But I see so many people talking about how he can get a ton of touches this season. But I feel like now people are just assuming he's going to. So it's like if everyone keeps saying he could get a ton, he could get a ton, he could get a ton. In people's mind, that's like, oh, he's going to get a ton of touches. No, he could. But it's probably the least likely outcome. The most likely outcome is that he does not get a ton of touches. People are just assuming there's going to be some switch from Cam Newton to Mac Jones and that they're going to feature Damian Harris and like all these problems are going to go away. But last time I checked, Cam Newton was still the favorite to start the season as the quarterback. And, like, yes, he has this, like, bone bruise in his hand, but he's going to be fine. It's a super minor injury. Like, he's still the favorite. And while Jones could take over at some point, we have no idea when that'll be or even if it'll be at this season, right? And that's incredibly important for the running backs because 
None of them are viable with new in at quarterback. I mean, do you remember Thursday's stat of the day? Seven players had more than 70% of their teams carried inside the five-yard line. James Robinson, Josh Jacobs, Todd Gurley, Zeke, Kenyon Drake, Derrick Henry, Cam Newton. With Cam Newton at quarterback, you cannot start a Patriots running back. They're not going to get receptions. Their t- touchdown upside is just super, super capped. But now let's assume Mac Jones is the starting quarterback. Well, number one, Harris's ADP goes up even higher. But two, James White is still there, so Harris won't be getting third down snaps. And the rookie that is drafted, Stevenson, he's 5'11", 231, and people around the team are like comparing him to Blunt. Okay, well, good luck with Harris's touchdown upside if they've got a back that they're going to use as a goal line guy. So it's what? Harris is just a first and second down running back? So we could see a season where he's got like 700 rushing yards, but only two touchdowns and five receptions, otherwise known as exactly what he just did last season when pretty much no one wanted him. So there are just there are just a, so many reasons to not draft Harris, and yet all I hear around the industry, every single platform is hyping him up. Whenever that happens, ADP climbs higher and higher and higher. I don't get it, and so I'm not going to be taking part in that, even though as a Patriots fan, I want him to succeed. I would love it if he had 1,300 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns a season. I'd love it. I just don't see it happening with who else they have on the roster and who their quarterbacks could be. Another running back that I think you'll regret drafting is Ronald Jones. Um, I feel like we just need to stop trying to make Ronald Jones a thing. Yes, he's talented. Yes, he's young. But what has he done to this point for us to know that he's going to get a large workload like I'm not trying to argue that if he gets the touches he, he won't be good I mean this is a, a good offense with a good defense high scoring team should be winning a lot of games yeah I'd love the lead back but he played less than 30% of the snaps in the three playoff games that he was active in and he had a few nice games at like the midpoint of the season but they were so random like he'd go from three carries and nine yards one week and then bust up for 23 carries for 192 yards and a touchdown the next week But if we look at these weeks, it's like, I mean, now we know why they happened, right? Three of the four games that he played well didn't have Leonard Fournette active. Okay, in the fourth game, he happened to score a 98-yard rushing touchdown. So they just kept giving the ball because they were also up a ton and just left him in. But he didn't even do well the rest of the game. I mean, the rest of the game, he had 22 carries for 90 scoreless yards. So outside of a 98-yard rushing touchdown, it wasn't even a good game for him. Like, So he has four good games, three without Fournette, and one just had one long play. I mean, he did not do that well last season. And what do they do in the offseason? They literally come out and say, we do not like what we had from our running backs last season in the receiving game, which is absolutely fair because both Fournette and Marlon Jones were awful in the receiving game. And they go out and get Giovanni Bernard, one of the best pass-catching running backs in the entire NFL. You know, and if you don't think Brady had something to do with that, then I don't know how to get through to you. Like, he obviously had a say in that decision. Like, Gio's just going to be there, James White. And so the best case scenario for Ronald Jones is that Fournette gets hurt and he's still only getting the early down work with no receptions. And so he'd still be valuable if he had all of that early down work. But I don't know, man. I mean, for you to rely on Leonard Fournette getting injured and then still have a guy that's only getting carries? I don't know, man. It's not what I'm targeting for ceiling in the ninth round. Give me Tony Pollard, Gus Edwards, Dylan, Drake... Uh, or even just like other positions, Pittman, Hardman, Mooney, uh, Marvin Jones, Russell Gage, Elijah Moore, just I don't know. There's other players who can perform well and don't necessarily need an injury. Some of those guys are listed probably need an injury, but with their injuries, some of the players that just mentioned, their upside's higher. Tony Pollard, sure, he needs a Zeke injury, but which would you rather have? Tony Pollard if Zeke gets hurt as a feature back in Dallas, or Ronald Jones if Fournette gets hurt as the first and second down back in Tampa Bay? I mean, the, the choice to me is very clear. So if you're drafting someone who needs an injury, at least make sure they're going to absolutely dominate if it happens. So I'm off the Ronald Jones bandwagon because I just think the overwhelmingly likely outcome is that he disappoints for a third consecutive season. So those are the running backs that I think will disappoint you this year if you draft them. If you want to see who I think you should be drafting, then check out my rankings at our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. And it's not only the rankings. We have projections, risk grades, and individual breakdowns as well. So be sure to check that out if you have not done so already. But that, my friends, is the end of this one. Hope you all did enjoy. If you did, then how about hitting that like button? And how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here? Thanks for watching.